Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlamyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at calculating the pH of a buffer that's been made from a weak acid and a strong base. Now this calculation is quite long, it's very very long um, and so I'm going to try and break it down as many steps as I can and try to explain why we're doing each step because I think if you have an understanding of why you're calculating something then um, it helps you to, it's less about remembering a series of steps and more about actually applying it and prompting you to do the next step. So this um, feeds on from the video which looks at making a buffer solution when you uh, mix a strong uh, base and a weak acid together. Um, if you haven't seen that video, it is strongly advised that you watch that one first before watching this one. So if you just click on the link below um, and you'll be able to watch that one first. But again, I'm going to assume that you've seen that uh, with this um, calculation here. So. What we're saying is, um, we've got this question here, and it says, calculate the pH of the solution formed when 15 centimeters cubed of 0.1 moles per dm cube of sodium hydroxide is added to 25 centimeters cubed of 0.2 moles per decimeters cubed of ethanoic acid. And we've got a Ka value there. Now, this, we're making a buffer, and buffers um, always have to contain a weak acid and its salt. And because we've got that, we need to base this calculation around the Ka expression, and that is crucial. So there's your Ka expression up there, and everything we're going to do here is mainly, most of the steps is mainly to write out a Ka expression and be able to get the numbers in there correctly. Um, now, there is some assumptions that we've got to make as well, and I'll come on to them in a minute when we need to. Um, and there's a series of um, lists or checklists that we have to do when we're calculating these. And it's quite a long list, but again, I'm going to try and explain each step, and, and hopefully it should be okay. Um, we've got nine different stages for this type of calculation, uh, and I'm going to follow these checklists here and write all the different workings out in these boxes on, this, uh, on the board here. So we'll start with the first one. Um, and there is a saying um, that I probably like to say quite a bit, that if in doubt, work out the moles. And that's exactly what we start off with here, because um, from the moles, you can calculate so many different things. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the number of moles of our weak acid. So we have um, a, uh, a few numbers here, and our weak acid is here. So we've got a volume and we've got a concentration. So from that, we can work out the moles. So the moles of weak acid is basically the concentration times by the volume, uh, and the volume we're going to convert to decimeters cubed, and um, so we have to turn um, centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed, so we're going to divide by a thousand. Again, if you're not sure on how to convert units, um, there is a video that looks into um, converting units, just click on the link below uh, and you can have a look at that. So the concentration here is 0.2, so we're going to put that in there, and we're going to multiply that by the volume, and the volume is 25. Uh, centimeters cubed, but I'm going to write 25 times by 10 to the minus 3 because that takes into account that we've divided it by a thousand to get it into decimeters cubed. And if we multiply them two numbers together, we should get 5 times by 10 to the minus 3. Uh, and that is moles because that's what we've worked out. So there's our first answer. So that's our first step moles of weak acid, and we've done that bit. Brilliant. Right. So the next thing is we need to work out the moles of our strong base. So our strong base is sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide, um, we've got 15 centimeters cubed of 0.1 moles per decimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide. So that's in a separate beaker. So we've got one beaker of acid and one beaker of sodium hydroxide. So we're going to work out the moles of that as well. And again, we're going to do the same calculation, concentration times by the volume. The concentration of sodium hydroxide is uh, 0.1 and our volume is 15 but again I'm going to convert that to decimeters cubed so I'm going to divide that by thousands so I've just put times 10 to the minus 3 uh, and then we should get a value for the moles of weak base of 1.5 times by 10 to the minus 3 and that's moles. Okay so we've got moles of our acid and we've got moles of our um, of our base so we can tick that off. Again remember we want to work out the pH so we need to work out the H plus so ultimately what we're trying to do is work out concentrations of um, of the HA and A minus and 
In order to do that, obviously a concentration is moles per decimeters cubed. So that's why we've worked out the moles of these two first. So what we've then done is we then need to work out um, what the excess uh, moles of acid is. We've taken these two and we've mixed them together. Um, but what we have is we have an excess of acid and a small amount of sodium hydroxide. So a large amount of acid and a small amount of sodium hydroxide. We mix them in, two beakers in at the same time. And what you'll have is you'll have a little bit less sodium hydroxide than acid. So you'll have an excess of acid that's left behind. And we need to work out how many moles of acid do we have left after we've mixed these two beakers together. And we call that the excess. So it's really easy to work out. All we do is you take, um, you can see that we have um, more moles of um, acid than we do alkali. You can see we've got 5 times 10 to the minus 3, and the alkali, uh, we've actually only got 1.5. So we subtract them two away from each other. Um, so it should be 5 times 10 to the minus 3. Minus 3, and we're going to subtract that away from 1.5 times by 10 to the minus 3. So that's the moles of acid, that's your moles of alkali, so we're subtracting them away from each other, and we should get an answer of 3.5 times by 10, times by 10 to the minus 3, um, and that is moles of acid, and that's the excess moles, so that's after we've mixed them together. So there's our answer there, brilliant. So now we know the moles of our acid, well, after we mix them, and we know the number of moles of um, alkali, and then what we can do is we need to then work out the number of moles, so I'll tick that off. Then we need to work out the number of moles of salt that's been formed. And this is where our assumption actually comes in here. So you can see that actually, um, because this is a one-to-one -one ratio, that's how they react. Then we can say that the concentration of sodium hydroxide actually equals the concentration of our thanoate ions. And if you don't know where we've got that from, again, if you look on the video, if you just click on the link below, and that will explain where we've got that assumption from. So all the sodium hydroxide added reacts um, with your um, ethanoic acid, which is here, um, to form your salt, and then that salt dissociates fully to make this. So that's where we get that from. So all we have to do is link the two together. So we can say that the concentration of sodium hydroxide, which is, uh, of, well, the concentration equals the concentration of acid, but we can also link that with moles as well. So the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, which is here, equals the number of moles of salt. So we can say that um, our moles of salt is actually 1.5 times by 10 to the minus 3. So we'll put that there. So moles of salt. And remember our salt is the A minus part of our expression, which is um, so it's not concentration, it's just the moles. So the moles is the A minus part. So the number of moles of that is 1.5 times by 10 to the minus 3. And that's the number of moles of salt that we've got. Right. So we've done all the mole calculations. So all of these, the first four steps is just moles, working out moles of the different parts. And um, we can't put in moles in our K expression. We need to work out concentrations of HA, A minus, and obviously we know KA as well. So in order to work out concentration, we need a volume. So what we do in step five is work out the total volume in our combined solution. So our combined solution is 25 centimeters cubed, uh, and we're gonna add that to 15 centimeters cubed. And obviously if we add them two together, we get a total volume of 40 centimeters cubed. Again, um, we need to convert that to decimeters cubed. So we can say that's 40 times by 10 to the minus 3 decimeters cubed. So again, we've divided up by 1,000. That's why I put the times 10 to the minus 3. So now once we've worked that out, that's the total volume done. We can then now work out the concentration of our acid. Now this is the acid that's in excess that was left behind. So when we're working out the concentration of our acid, we need to do the number of moles divided by the volume. Again, that's got to be in decimeters cubed. So the moles of our um, excess acid is in step three. So that is 3.5. 3.5 times by 10 to the minus three. And we're going to divide that by the total volume, which is 40 times by 10 to the minus three, because that's in decimeters cubed. 
um, and we should get a total um, X or a total concentration of acid of 0.0875. Moles per dm cubed. Good. Okay, so we've got our concentration of our acid, which is this bit here. So obviously the next thing we'll have to try and work out is the concentration of our salt part, which is this here. And again, you do the same calculation. We've just worked out the number of moles of salt. So we do moles divided by volume. And again, that's got to be in decimeters cubed. So I'll put that on there. So our total number of moles of salt, so is in step four, and that's what we've just worked out there. So that is 1.5 times by 10 to the minus 3. We're going to divide that by our volume, which again is 40. That's our total volume, 40 times by 10 to the minus 3. Uh, and that should give us a total concentration of salt to be 0 0.0375. And that's moles per dm cubed. Okay, so we've got our concentration of our acid, we've got our concentration of our salt, and um, now we've got these two, we know the value of Ka, so finally we can actually rearrange this to get the concentration of H+. plus. So that's what we're going to put there. So the concentration of H+, plus, which will go on there, um, is equal to the Ka, and we're going to multiply that by the concentration of HA. So this is just the rearranged form. I'm going to divide that by the concentration of A minus. Um, and if we put them numbers in, if we just squeeze this in here, Ka is 1.76 times by 10 to the minus 5. And we're going to multiply that by the concentration of our acid, um, which we worked out in step 6. So that's 0 0.0875. 875. And we're going to divide that. So that's what we've got there. I'm going to divide that by the concentration of A minus, which was in step seven. So that one is 0 0.0375. So we put all that in, and we should get a concentration of H plus, uh, and that should come out to be 4.11 times by 10 to the minus five. Uh, and that's obviously in moles per decimeters cubed. Uh, and then finally, the last step, um, so that's what we've just worked out there. We've just worked out the concentration of H+. Plus, and finally, because we've got that, we can now work out the pH. So you use your pH expression. So pH equals the minus log of H+, plus, which is this thing that we've just worked out there. And um, so that's it there. And then what you can do is you put that in. So pH equals the minus log. And our H plus was 4.11 times by 10 to the minus 5. That was our that was our concentration of H plus. And we put all that in, and we should get a pH of 4.39. And that is how you work out the pH of a solution. Now, just in summary, because I know this is a big, big calculation. In summary, ultimately, you need to find the values. Because if you're wanting to work out pH, you need to work out H+. Plus. And now because you don't have H+, plus, you need to work it out from the K expression. You need to work out the concentration of your um, acid and the concentration of your salt. Remember, you're mixing these two together. So you need to work out all the moles first, then work out your volume, work out your concentrations. And all of these steps here, we're trying to work out these two parts here. So that was the ultimate goal. That's why we've done it in that way. And remember, it's the excess acid that you want to measure, not the acid that you've actually put in, because some of your acid has reacted with your alkali. So you don't have the same amount of uh, acid particles at the start as after you've actually reacted them. So you've just got to bear that in mind. Um, but I hope that's um, cleared a few things up, uh, and I hope that um, explains it in a, in a logical way. Um, but that's it. Lots of practice. Bye.